Hello guys, myself Mayank and I'm back with another video and today's topic is how I optimize Spark Jobs. Today I'm going to share my all experiences and learnings of previous projects in optimizing Spark Jobs. What problems I faced and how I resolved it, I'm gonna share all the suggestions in this video. So watch it till then. So first suggestion is filter the data as soon as possible. So very basic and simple one, don't take records further if you don't need it. The first mistake as a novice I did was doesn't matter if I need it or not, I always read full data from all the tables. Don't do this, please. I know many of you will say, hey Mayank, we don't need to worry about this, as Catalyst Optimizer handles it for us. Yes, it's true. It will automatically pull only those columns which we are going to use, not all, thanks to lazy evaluation, obviously. But what if you want to filter by records, not columns? For example, Let's say in a table, you want to find count of records only for Asian countries at the end. You don't need European or African countries. So good idea is filter out European and African countries data at the very beginning. Although by using predicate pushdown and other optimization, Spark can do this as well for you, but not in all the scenarios. We will discuss those scenarios in some other video, but as a thumb rule, you can remember, filter your data as much and as soon as possible, always. Now. Most of the time, my manager or architect pings me and say, this job is taking very long time. So can you please optimize it? And I was like, I am not the one who created this job. Why? Why me? Right. But sometimes you have to do it and it becomes very difficult to troubleshoot those jobs which you have no idea what's going on. So the approach is without deep diving into code, first open the Spark UI and check where job is spending most of the time. Finding out the bottleneck is a very crucial step in this. So check, is it taking time while shuffling data in joins? Or is there any skew? Or maybe executors are over or underutilized? Idea is, instead of blindly optimizing job, just check where the problem is first. So sometimes people ask me over LinkedIn or on call that my job is running slow. What should I do? Answer is, I don't know. Unless I see the Spark UI or until I know where the problem is, it is difficult to suggest the solution. So try to figure out where the problem is. Now, when you figure it out right where the problem is, there could be some general scenarios. Let's uh, discuss in this video together. First scenario, the first scenario could be it is taking a lot of time in writing. So op to optimize these steps, there could be two ways. First is, if you are writing in some flat file, right now change it to Parquet or ORC or some other advanced format, if your use case allows, obviously. Writing in Parquet is super fast due to its structure. You can see performance improvement up to 70-80% to 80 in some scenarios. Just try it now. Second way is check if all the tasks writing it to files are having sufficient data. You may want to increase or decrease the number of partition by bringing data to optimal numbers. Check it out my other video on my channel where I discuss how to find optimal number of partitions if you are not aware. This will give you optimal performance in terms of parallel writing. Other scenario could be, it is taking a lot of time in shuffle. Most commonly available problem you will find almost in every job. First solution, avoid it. Avoid shuffle as much as you can or try respective techniques where there is less transfer of data over network. For example, use reduce key over group by key and there are plenty of this versus that resources available for Spark over internet. Let me know in comments if you need that list. I'll create a video on that as well. Second solution for this problem is, by default shuffle partition property is set to 200. Try playing with this property. Try to make number in such a way that there is no spill on disk and Tasks are not underutilized even. Magic number is input block size, which is 128 MB or 256 MB, depending upon Hadoop distribution you are using. Keep the data too close to your magic number. This will give you optimal performance again. Okay, so now the third scenario could be skew. So if there is a skew, you may keep waiting for your job to finish till eternity. If skew is there, your job may not finish for a very long time. It will not fail, but it will not complete even. So sometimes you get timeout error depending upon other properties you've set also. So how to solve skew? It is a very big topic I've already explained in another video. And even Spark 3 brings something new for us to handle skew. Go and check out that video. So final scenario in my list is basic checks. 
basic checks you need to do to improve performance. This is something I have noticed while doing peer review. So always check your code before moving it to further. So few examples for basic checks are, so make sure you don't have unnecessary actions are present in code like count, show, etc. Developers put it while debugging code and then forget to remove. Common scenario, isn't it? So make sure you don't have these debugging actions. It will hit the performance for obvious reasons. Check if you can put cache to increase performance. But at the same time, don't cache your persist big tables or data frames. It will hinder your performance instead of improving. Check if you can apply broadcast. Although broadcast property is set by default to 10 MB, see if you want to play with this property by increasing it to few more times, maybe 20 MB or 50 MB. So these are the common issues which I faced in my career. Let me know in comment if you have faced any other scenarios. And last thing I have put so much effort in making this video. So please like, comment, subscribe if it helps you and share it with your friends who needs it. So that's it for this video. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.